Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you all here this Sunday morning for worship. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. So I'm glad to be here with you all here at Gethsemane United Methodist Church, where we will be welcoming Journey United Methodist Church, who will also be worshiping along with us. Let us all prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of the Lord. Thank you. 
difficult and challenging times, I humbly ask that you would direct our hearts and minds towards you and fill us with your spirit, bringing refreshing, renewal, peace, and joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens, that you will renew our strength, and that you will give us rest, comfort, protection, and healing when we come to you. Forgive us for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independently of your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distance from your presence. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways and your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem us through the gift of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you, Lord, that your face is directed toward the righteous, that you are close to the brokenhearted, that you hear our prayers and know our hearts. Thank you for your daily, powerful, constant presence in our lives. We thank you that you are with us no matter what we are facing, whether it's serious illness, job loss, grief, depression, or anxiety. We know that your heart is turned towards us and your eyes are over us and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. Dear Lord, we pray for those impacted by serious and seemingly unendless violence as well as for those impacted by disasters of fires, tornadoes, storms, and other natural and unnatural causes. Help us to never take for granted the gift of love you have offered us. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not fully recognizing what you've so freely given and all that Christ has done for us. Help us to always remember that you alone are God. May we always choose to press close to you and to keep you first in our hearts and lives. May we always walk in your wisdom and purpose and stay strong in the faith. All-knowing God, direct and guide the thoughts and actions and minds of the leaders of our community, our county, our nation, and world, so that the best decisions can be made for the benefit of your people. 
We pray for your protection over our lives and our families. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us distant from the evil of the world. That you will be a barrier over us and that we will find refuge in you. We pray that you would give us discernment and insight to understand your will, to hear your voice, and to know your ways. Lord, we ask that you keep our footsteps firmly on solid ground, helping us to be consistent and faithful. Give us supernatural endurance to stay the course, not swerving to the right or to the left or being too easily distracted. We want to walk with you. Shine your light in us, through us and over us. May our body of Christ, known as Gethsemane, be a beacon on the hill, making a difference in the community for your glory. Set your way before us so that we will reflect the mission and purpose of your great church universal. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world so desperately in need of your presence and healing. We thank you, dear Lord, for sending us an anointed visionary minister to guide us. May he illumine us today through the spoken word. And may he continue to bless us and take us to new heights and levels of Christian service. We give you praise and honor for the ways, for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are holy and just. We bless you, O oh Lord, and thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. In the most powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Today's scripture lesson is taken from Jeremiah, the first chapter, verses 1 through 10. These are the words of Jeremiah, Hilkiah's son, who was one of the priests of Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. The Lord's word came to Jeremiah in the 13th year of Judah's King Josiah Ammon's son, and throughout the rule of Judah's king Jehoiakim, Josiah's son, until the fifth month of the 11th year of King Zedekiah, Josiah's son, when the people of Jerusalem were taken into exile. The Lord's word came to me. Before I created you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. Ah, oh, Lord God, I said, I don't know how to speak because I am a child. The Lord responded, don't say I'm only a child. Where I send you, you must go. What I tell you, you must say. Don't be afraid of them, because I am with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, I'm putting my words in your mouth. This very day, I appoint you over nations and empires to dig up and pull down, to destroy and demolish, to build and plant. 
This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace and peace, everyone. Grace and peace and welcome to worship with the Prince Lower Prince George's County Cluster. This is our fifth Sunday cluster worship, and we are glad to be in the presence of the Lord together. Thank God for all that has taken place thus far. Uh, Minister Fred has already welcomed everybody, and so uh, I know that you feel the joy of the Lord and the welcoming and the warmth, but we just say we're just glad to be here with Journey United Methodist Church and, um, and Gethsemane United Methodist Church. We're glad for the Lower Prince George's County Cluster. We honor the Lord for the uh, set gift, the pastor of Journey United Methodist Church, uh, Reverend Michael Parker, in his, as he is taking a, a leave of rest and renewal, we say, God bless you, Pastor Parker. We trust that you are not watching us right now, that you are resting at this time. We thank God for everybody else who is on the, on the uh, air right now. We want to invite you to join either Journey or Gethsemane in their worship Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can check Check us both out on Facebook Live, you can check us out on Zoom, and you can check us out on YouTube. So you have your option. You can check, you can be on live with us, live, live with one church at 10, and you can go back and check out the other at 11. Praise the Lord. Uh, and so however way you do it, we thank God for, for you. We in, invite you to engage with us in ministry, uh, with either church in ministry. God bless you today. Uh, let us receive, let us receive the worship ministry of the Levites, Sister Lisa Gibson Davis. Amen. Amen. It is offering time. It is time for giving. Hallelujah. Thank God. So wherever you are, for whatever church you're connected to, we invite you to get your device out. Get your, uh, the, any way, the, the way that you give, we invite you to get that method out. If you're writing a check, you can uh, you can start to, uh, to address your check. If you're giving to uh, Journey United Methodist Church, you can mail in your gift. You can mail in your gift. You can give online through Givelify, um, or you can give in other ways, and those ways are before you even right now. If you're giving to Gethsemane, you can mail in your gift. You can give on the website. You go to the website, or you can text your gift, and that information is in front of you right now. Listen, it doesn't matter what uh, congregation you are a part of or what congregation you give to. Listen, both congregations are good ground. And we thank God for your giving. Your giving allows all of our congregations to be able to give back to the community, to the community through feeding those who need to be fed, through providing uh, different services, and, and also through our giving to ministries around the world. And so we thank God for your giving. Listen, the scripture says, give. And it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall individuals give back unto you. So we thank God. It also says that God loves a cheerful giver. So can you do this? Can you put a big smile on your face? Put a big smile as you write that check out. Put a big smile as you go online. Put a big smile on your face as you're giving because you know that you are making room for more. And we agree with you, even right now as you're, as you're giving. We agree that you are blessed and not cursed. You are above only and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. You are delightsome in a wholesome land unto God. You are blessed to be a blessing. Can you say that? I am blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. We declare it now for you by faith in Jesus name. Amen. I bless you today. Let's go further in worship. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. We have to learn how to wait on the Lord and trust Him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah, Lord. I don't mind.
psalmist I, you don't mind waiting on the Lord you don't mind waiting wait on the Lord and be of good courage and God shall strengthen thine heart wait the, the uh, writer said wait I say on the Lord come on and tell God thank you come on lift your hands and tell God thank you lift up your voice and shout hallelujah hallelujah to God hallelujah hallelujah to God Amen. Our scripture has already been so eloquently read by our sister Dorothy Stubbs, and we thank God for her. We thank God for Minister Fred, uh, for Minister Fred Blair, uh, and for all of God's people for uh, Brother David Lewis, for Brother Reginald James, for Sister Lisa, and all of God's people, and the people that you don't see behind the scenes. God bless you, sister, Brother uh, brother uh, Cameron Guest. Uh, God bless you, Sister uh, Karen Thornton, Brother Brandon Hayes, Brother Ernest Collins. God bless the team over here. We thank God for the team at Journey as well. God bless each and every one of you. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Send your word here to help us. Send your word here to heal us. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We thank you now. Granted unto this, your servant, clarity of thought, conciseness of speech, and the anointing that destroys every yoke. Touch your people here. Give ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a will to obey. We thank you. We thank you in advance for being mindful of us. We thank you in advance for sending us your word. We thank you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank God. The scripture has been read, and I just want to lift up one verse of scripture. Verse 5 of chapter 1 in Jeremiah, it says, Before I created you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we all said, thanks be to God. Amen. Listen, saints, last week I talked about Jesus announcing his mission in Luke chapter 4. And we talked about last week having a fresh anointing. We talked about having a fresh anointing. And we agreed um, that God anoints us. God smears God's oil on us, so to speak. God anoints us not just for us to say that we are anointed, not for us to just go and put ourselves out there as if we are on some type of a, a show or something of that nature, but we are anointed to do something. You are anointed for a task. You are anointed for a purpose. And so uh, we, we discovered last week that we are, we like Jesus, are anointed. We are called out. We have God's special touch. We have God's hand on us. We are anointed. If you believe that, just lift up your hands and say, I am anointed. I, I am anointed. And so God has intended specific people for specific tasks. God has intended specific people for specific tasks. It's not when you come to God and when you start to work for the Lord, it's not just get in where you fit in with God. It's not just get in and just do what you want to do. Come on in. You don't do this well. That's all right. Just do the best that you can and it's all right. No, no, no. It is with God. It is go where I send you. Say what I send said and do what I instructed you to do. God is specific about what God has designed for us. God is specific about the about the instructions God has, the tasks that, that God has for us. God is specific about these things and God is specific about who God wants to do what. Can you say amen? Now, while salvation is free to everybody, God is, as I said, God is very specific about what is to be done and who is 
is to do it. Furthermore, the tasks that God assigns, the work that God assigns to our hands as human humanity, uh, it may not be easy all the time. Uh, however, God somehow instills the passion, the will, and the drive to complete the work that is assigned to us. And so we understand that though that although in that sense we are anointed, we are anointed for a task. We are anointed for specific tasks and we are anointed and God is intent upon us doing what we are anointed to do. God calls us. God calls us to do God's work in the earth realm. And so we can see this through our text today. You, are you ready to join us in the text? I won't be very long and this is going to be more of a teaching word today so stay stay with us stay with us this morning our our text comes from the prophet jeremiah Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet, and much of the work that of his prophetic speech is about the impending doom that came to the people of Judah and the, in the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people in the surrounding areas. So uh, as, it's, as Jeremiah went on in his ministry, he was not a popular kind of guy because he always had, it seemed, bad news. He was always talking about what was coming, the end is coming. This is bad. This is bad. It always seemed like Jeremiah was crying about something. Jeremiah was whining about something. It just seemed like it. So Jeremiah became known as the weeping prophet. And so uh, the text opens up with the superscription indicating a couple of facts about Jeremiah as an introducing us to this prophet. Number one in Jeremiah chapter one, Jeremiah, uh, the, 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 it starts out by talking about where Jeremiah's lineage and where he was from. Jeremiah was the son of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was a priest from Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. What does that say to us? That Jeremiah was from a priestly line. It was as if Jeremiah was a PK. He was a church boy, so to speak. So Jeremiah was familiar with the ways and the and the and the traditions of his faith it had been passed down to him from generation to generation to generation and so uh, and so we find that he is the son of Hilkiah he has a he's from a priestly lineage then uh, the next thing that we find out is we find the time of his ministry it says that he ministered during the reigns of Judas kings Josiah Jehoiakim and Zedekiah this would suggest that Jeremiah's ministry began during a good time in Judah's history, during a time when Josiah had initiated reforms. He was restoring the worship of the one true God. He was restoring faithfulness to the covenant, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to uh, the inhabitants of Judah's covenant with God. And it was a good time. It seemed like things were getting on a good foot, on the up and up. But uh, uh, Jeremiah's ministry extended past the good time to and it, it extended to a very dark time, a time of devastation, a time of destruction. It extended to where the kings, the end, the last king of Judah. And so this was a time when the rise of the Babylonian Empire, the destruction of Jerusalem, the devastation of the temple, and the carrying away of exiles into Babylon. That meant that Jeremiah's call extended from good times into bad times. That means that the word of the Lord, there was a word from God, whether they wanted it or not, whether they, they, whether they liked it or not, there was a word from God for every season. There was a word from God from for every time uh, that they were experiencing. And so uh, Jeremiah was called and Jeremiah ministered through those times. But let's go back to Jeremiah's beginning. Let's go back to Jeremiah's beginning. And we learn a few things about God and God's call from this text. We learn one thing uh, that the, the text says that the word of the Lord came to me and God somehow spoke to Jeremiah. And it is, it, it is inferred in this text that perhaps maybe Jeremiah received his call as a young man. And, Jer and the Lord said, before I created you in the womb, I knew you. 
Uh, I knew you. And so we see that God's call is certain. God's call is irrefutable. Uh, that means that it's a certain. God's call is irrefutable. God said to Jeremiah, God spoke to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, before you were even formed, before you were a thought within your mother and for your mother and father before you were even formed in your mother's belly I knew you I knew you I knew you knew you uh, has two 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 meanings there it could mean that there was a sense of choosing I knew you like I chose you when you were just in my mind I chose you when you were in my plan before the foundations of the world I chose you for this job for this moment for this assignment assignment but knew you when God says I knew you it can also mean that I was watching over you I was caring for you I was caring for you when you were just a, before you were a thought when your mother was a little girl I was caring for you when your mother and father met I was watching over over you when your when your mother when you were mother was carrying you in her womb I was watching over I was protecting you before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you I chose you, I was watching over you, and I was caring for you. God's call is irrefutable. God had a Jeremiah in mind before Jeremiah knew that there was even a Jeremiah to be had in mind. Praise the Lord. And God said, God, and then God went on and said, I, I knew you and I and, and I set you apart. Before you were born, I set you apart. I sanctified you. Some of your versions might say, I sanctified you. I set you apart for a specific task. I set you apart for a purpose. I set you apart for a reason. Jeremiah, I set you apart. I made a distinction with you. I made it. And I love everybody, but there was a distinction that I made because there was something that you. You had to do for me specifically, Jeremiah. And not only that, uh, before I, I knew you, I set you apart, and then I made you a prophet to the nations. I made, I gave you an assignment before you were born. I gave you an assignment in when you were in my mind. God said, when you were only in my mind, I gave you an assignment. The first. Thing Thing that we learn is that God's call is irrefutable. God's call is certain. God did not make, God was not trying to figure it out. God did not just say, oh, let me see, let me see. I'll pull Jeremiah. No. God, God God's call God meant for to use Jeremiah. God intended for that. God knew what time period uh, Jeremiah would come into this earth realm. God knew what time period Jeremiah would be used as an oracle for God. God's call is irrefutable. It is certain. That's the first thing that we learn. The next thing that we learn as we travel through this text, we see that God's call is undeniable. Can you say that undeniable? Undeniable. God's call is undeniable. Verses 6, verse 6 says... Uh, Jeremiah tried to respond to God. He said, ah, Lord God, I said, I don't know how to speak because I'm only a child. I don't know what to say. I'm too young. The Lord responded, don't say I'm only a child. Where I send you, you must go. Listen, friends, we do not disqualify ourselves from what God is calling us to do. I'll say it again. You do not disqualify yourself from what God has calling you to do. You cannot sense God's call and say, Lord, well, I got a bad credit, so I can't do it. Well, God, I got a bad reputation, so I guess that counts me out. No, God's call is irrefutable. It is certain. It is solid. And it is also undeniable. You are not too young. You are not too old. You are not too rich. You are not too poor. You are not well connected. You are not connected enough. If God called you for a work, if God called you to an assignment, if God called you to, to be a certain thing, to be in a certain role, if God called you to this, then God will equip you and God will qualify. 
disqualify you. You, we, you and me cannot disqualify ourselves from what God is calling us to do. God's call is irrefutable and God's call is undeniable. You cannot deny God. You cannot say no. God does not take well to no for an answer. God does not take no for an answer. If God said it, then it is a thing. Do you know who God is? God is the one who created the heavens and the earth. God is the one who called the who called the moon and the stars, called them into being. God is the one who created universes, not just this one, but all of the universes that exist. Everything that is, is because of God. Everything that moves, moves because of God. Everything that exists, exists because of God. You exist because of God. It is not you who's doing God a favor. It is not you who is doing, who's, who's do somewhere and God is, is happy that you're alive. No, we are the ones who owe God our lives. We are the ones who serve the Lord. We serve the Lord with gladness. And so, so saying no to God is not an option. So let's do this. Come on, can, let me have, let me help you. Can you lift your hands and tell God yes? Yes, that's what you have to practice. Come on, saints. Lift your hands and say yes, Lord. Practice it. Practice saying yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your call. Yes, Lord. Yes. God's call is irrefutable. And God's call is undeniable. What else is God's? What, what is the third? What is the third thing? I'm so glad you asked. Look at verses 8 and 9. Look at verses 8 and 9. The, the Lord started talking to Jeremiah. He said, listen, you must, in verse 7, he said, listen, you, you will go where I send you. You must go and what I tell you, you must say. He said, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them because I'm with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. Yes. And then look, then look at what it says in verse 9. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, I'm putting my words in your mouth. Here's the third thing. God's call is inescapable. God's call is inescapable. You cannot run from God's call. There is no place that you can hide from God's call. If God has determined to use you in one way or another, if God has called you to one office or another, if God has called you to one work or another, you can go hither and thither and what will happen is you will run right into the will of God. You'll, th you'll think that you're running away. You think that you're running away from a person. You think that you're running away from a work. Some of you, somebody watching me you may have given up on church. You may have given up. I'm not fooling with church anymore. I love God, but I just don't like these church people. I'm not going. So you just stop going. You just stop. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to love God. Well, number one, you can't love God and not God's people. Let me just slip that in. That didn't cost you nothing. You can't love God and not love God's people. But anyway, you can run away from God's, uh, God's church and you can run right into the will of God. You'll run right into being used by God. You'll run right into God speaking through you. You'll one run right into doing the work that God had always intended for you to do. You'll run right into it. You cannot. God's call is inescapable. And so he said, don't be afraid of them. Who are the them? The them are individuals who would seek to do harm. The, th the them are individuals who may not necessarily co-sign on your call. The them are individuals who have boxed you in to say that you can't do more than what they think you ought to do. The them, don't be afraid of them. You know them. You know they said I couldn't do it. They were looking at me wrong. They have these rules. It's them. Don't be afraid of them. My God today, God said I'm with you. God's presence is a constant when you're called. I am with you and I'm with you, God said to Jeremiah, to rescue you. There will be some times because this work that we engage in is risky.
risky. Uh, this work that we engage in is not just some kind of flighty, um, hug, 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 care bear type thing uh, where everybody's happy, 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 joy, joy. Uh, no, uh, this work will irritate. Uh, this work uh, will cause some people to be upset. Uh, this work, uh, this work, this the work of the kingdom, uh, the expansion of the kingdom, the work of God uh, disrupts systems, uh, breaks up the status quo, uh, brings God's justice into the earth. Uh, that is not an easy job. Uh, that's breaking up fallow ground. Uh, that's dealing with that's dealing with hard to deal with people. Uh, that's calling demonic forces and, and, and taking authority over demonic forces uh, in the marketplace, in the government, uh, uh, in all kinds of sectors. Uh, that is all those those are all things that are difficult to do. Uh, individuals, they may rise up against you, uh, but the Bible says, God said to Jeremiah, I am with you, uh, and I'm with you to rescue you. Uh, God's presence is a constant. Uh, God's protection is guaranteed. Uh, God's oversight is guaranteed. Uh, you are safe in God. Uh, you are secure in God. Uh, God's got your back. Uh, God has God is protecting you. God is covering you. Yes, and then God said, I'm putting your word in my mouth. God has put what you need on the inside of you. What you need to do this work, God has gifted you. God has granted you. God has equipped you to do God's work. I'm putting your, my word in your mouth. God's call is irrefutable. God's call is undeniable. And God's call is inescapable. I believe the psalmist said, where can I go from your presence? If I, if I go to the mountains, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. You are everywhere. Back in the day, the psalmist, there was a psalmist that said, if I had the wings of a dove, wings that would take me to where I wanted to go, I would fly to the utmost, the utmost part of the world. But no, 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 no. There is no hiding place. There's no hiding place from the will of God. He, God's call is inescapable. Somebody say yes. Well, you may be saying, well, you talked about this scripture, but what is God saying to us today? Somebody from Journey may be asking, preacher, well, you know, what is God saying to us? Somebody from Gethsemane may be like, Reverend Ron, what's, what's happening? What's God saying? But well, listen here, friends, I'm wondering, I'm wondering today, I'm wondering, can you sense God's calling? Do you feel God's nudging? What is God calling you to do? What is God nudging you to do? For somebody out there, the Lord could be calling you to carry God's word. God could be calling you to the set, aside, set apart preaching ministry. But it also could be the prophetic. God could be calling somebody to be a specific oracle for God. And to others, God could be calling to God be, could be calling you to use your gifts for the benefit of others. It could be a gift of building, a gift of carpentry, a gift of engineering, a gift of writing. It could also be to do the work of justice, addressing the needs of addressing the needs of food injustice, uh, adjust, addressing the needs of all kinds of injustices in the world. God could be calling you. God could be calling you to address the needs for equal voting, for voting rights for everyone, and for voting rights to be secured. God is still calling. I, I just need you to know today that God is still calling individuals. God is still calling. God is still calling, and God is still calling you. If you have just raised your hand earlier in the service and said, I'm anointed, you are anointed to do something, you are anointed to fulfill fulfill the call that God has on your life. You are anointed to fulfill the specific work. You are anointed to fulfill the assignment that God has called for you. Now, if you try to run, if you say, oh, no, that ain't me. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to I just want to remind you today that God's call is irrefutable. It is certain. God didn't make a mistake. God didn't get mixed up. God didn't uh, skip over that one and, and me and get you 
and it was a whole big mix up of identity crisis. No, God's call is irrefutable. God's call is undeniable. You cannot talk your way out of doing what God and fulfilling the call of your on your life. And God's call is inescapable. Gethsemane, we have just come out of a season of prayer. We have just come out of seven days of prayer. It was during that time we didn't only ask for ask God for this, that, and the other. We weren't just requesting things from God. We, were, we weren't just requesting God to do favors for us. But that time was for, to, for us to align ourselves with God. Journey as you are praying, as you're praying, as you're praying for your pastor, as you're praying for your church, as you're praying for yourself. I would encourage you to align, use that prayer time to align yourself with God. And when you align yourself with God, when you align yourself with God, when you put, uh, put things in proper order and priority, when you seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you, you will find that when you put God in, in first place, you will find that God will be pulling on you and say, you put me in first place now, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is what I need you to fulfill. This is the work. This is your assignment. I know a lot of people are, are talking about, you know, when people do things right, they say they knew the assignment. They 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 finished, they, they completed, they fulfilled the, the assignment. Listen here, God said, I got something for you. As you go deeper in God, as you get to know God better, as you become more sensitive to God's presence, as you become more conscious of God's presence, as you grow in God, as you go further further in God, then your call becomes more evident. Then your call becomes clearer. Then your call becomes uh, more. Then God's nudging becomes a little more, a little more, uh, a little more uh, evident in your life in such a way that you have to fulfill what God is calling for you to do. And God's not just calling preachers. God's not just calling prophets. God is calling people to do the work of to do the work of the kingdom all over the world in different facets and different ways. So my question is, what? is God calling you to do? What is God calling you? What is God nudging you to do? Listen here, God's calling is regardless of what's going on in the nation. God's calling is regardless of what political party is in control. God's calling, God is calling regardless of good times, bad times, or indifferent times. God's calling comes from eternity into time, and it comes for a purpose. And so I ask you, I ask you to hear God today. Day, I ask you to consider what God is calling you to do. Hear God's voice. I need you to understand that God's call is irrefutable. God's call is undeniable. God's call is inescapable. Won't you hear God today? Won't you hear, won't you sense God? Won't you sense God's nudging? Won't you sense God's moving? Won't you sense how God is moving in your life? God's moving for more than just to give you stuff. God's moving for more than just, just to heal bodies and heal minds. God's doing all of that. But God's doing all that for a purpose. God's doing all that the purpose is to expand the body of Christ, to expand the kingdom of God. And God wants to use you to accomplish God's will in the earth.
for your glory. Use me for your glory. Make your will clear. Make your will clear. Make your will clear. Make your voice clear. Make it clear, God, and I'll go. Show me. Tell me. Use me. I'll do. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, friends, if you're listening here, listening to me and you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, all you have to do is believe. Believe that Jesus lived and died, was buried, and Jesus rose again. Believe that. Believe that with the little faith that you have, and God will take that faith, and God will give you salvation. God will seal you until the day of redemption. You want, you, you want to be led in prayer? I'll lead you. You want to be to lead you? That's fine. Just repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I am your child, and I want, to ma I want you to be my personal Savior into my life for the rest of my life and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you lived. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried and I believe that you rose again. I believe it and I receive you now in Jesus name. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you're rededicating your life to Christ, this is great. Let me congratulate you. Let, let me welcome you to the family of God or let me welcome you back, one or the other, to the family of God. Just uh, uh, email us, email us, either, email either church, email hope, H-O-P-E, at GethsemaneUMC.org or you can put connect in the in the, uh, in the uh, box there in the, on Facebook or on Zoom. You can put connect and we will reach out directly to you on YouTube. You can put connect as well and we will reach out to you in the name of the Lord. God bless you today. God bless you. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. Lift up God's countenance and give you peace. The Lord give you sensitivity to God's, to God's ear. God give you sensitivity to God's voice. God give you sensitivity to, to sense God's nudging and God give it to you to say yes to God. This is our prayer for you in 